Uh, William, from, from the outside looking in, it would seem like you have one of the most exciting careers in Hollywood. A lot of actors kind of get pegged to doing the same role over and over again. You've done all kinds of roles. And your Butch, Cas or Butch Cavendish role, you're just, as we, as we say in Chicago, you're a jag. Just, a, just, <laughs> just an evil, evil man. Did you research the actual uh, time period and the banditos from that time? Well, you know, so much of that, I, I, have, to, I have to give credit where credit is due. So much of that was, was, first of all, this is a Jerry Bruckheimer production. So the production values are going to be as, as, as high as the, any place in the world. Right. For real. Right. And I've worked with, this is the fourth time I've worked with Jerry. Gore Verbinski, you know, amazing storyteller. Then, you know, when you line up folks like Joel Harlow that created the whole look for Cavendish, and Penny Rose, the costumes, this is the stuff for an actor. These are, these just keep handing you gifts. It's you know? got to be fun to look in the oh, mirror and oh. see, because you're I remember the ugly, first time that he, mean looking. I, I kind of thought he was handsome. I don't really know where you're going <laughs> with that. But um, a lot of ladies love that look. I, you never know, right. right? Listen, if anybody comes up to me and go, I thought you looked good in that movie, I'm going to stay away from him. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. Don't talk to me. Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was, uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. For someone who looks to find guys like that, and I love to do that. Right. And this was right up the top of my list. And just such such an intensely evil person to play. You know, you're, you're running your gang. You're, you've got this whole nefarious enterprise going. And you just play it with such delight. It's great to watch. Was it fun to do? It you looked know, like it was very rigorous, but if, if, out here in the heat and all that. Yeah, if it's not fun, if, if there's not a place, you know. I mean, if, like, we would shoot scenes and in between takes laughing with the crew or, or, or army or johnny or like you know that moment was insane and then all right road camera and going right back into it i mean that's that's the way i i like to work and unlike a lot of big movies uh, almost all of this was done on real sets with oh, practical yeah. like the big train sequence at the end yeah. that was on a re you're running on a real train yeah we got, you know special effects in the background but i have to tell you something that when we're on top of that train which was to me the most challenging, most difficult, most terrifying aspect of, of, of making this movie. That was... Uh, Ruth said she ran circles around you, that you were the weak link. Oh, no doubt about it. No. Did she say that? She I said swear that. she was there. Um, <laughs> you know, jumping out of the train on him a full galloping horse, thrilling. Standing on top of that train. You did that end. yourself? Yeah. Did, how do you rehearse something stuff. like that? You start about two months before we actually we did that shot. Right. And uh, Tommy Harper, our incredible stunt coordinator, said... Love you to do it. If you don't want to do it, got it. We can we can cut around it. But if you do do it, we're gonna have one shot of you having a little. You're talking to them. You're gonna turn around and jump out. We're not gonna cut. You're gonna see that. That it's like, did he just go out? Right. Uh, you start you start by uh, standing still and jumping on off a platform on a horse, and then moving it two miles an hour, and five miles an hour, eight miles an hour, one or two times a week over two months, and then eventually, you know, you're you're up to speed. And then they roll the cameras and boom. Because you know? not only do you have to do it. But you got to look like a badass while you're doing it. You can't be cowering. You just have to. Well, what's interesting, character, about, what's right? interesting about the moment is that he's 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 you know he's locked up uh, the Lone Ranger and Tonto to the floor, and he's just you know everything's everything's dandy. <laughs> Good night, Saint Louis. You know, it's just like you know, yeah, nice, take it easy, and you. It's right. not like here we go and just pop out. It's a it, that, that's a great shot, and there's there's so much great action and adventure in this yeah. in this movie. But I think it's also rooted in the relationships of the character. And that's really what grinds home the tension and the drama yep. uh, and the scenes be between you and, and Johnny and Army are very intense. Do you, you rehearse that as well? Or you, you're goofing around and then you just turn it on for the... You, you know, know, everybody's a pro and everybody knows their character. And, um, you know, when it's time to go and, and Gore's very specific on what he wants, um, yeah, time to play. Would, Would you make another Western? Sure, Lone Ranger 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a great movie, very exciting. Thanks. You're great in it. Nice to meet you. Nice to Gorgeous meet you. country out here, huh? Mm, beautiful. Now, you were born and raised in England? I was. So. Rolling hills and green landscape. A little bit different yeah, for you, Yeah, a little right? bit different from the beige. Um, were you even aware of the Lone Ranger legend growing up? Um, not really. I, I heard of the term. I'd seen that mask around. I'd sort of heard of silver, but I, I didn't really know <laughs> much about it. You have silver in England? Well, I think I'd heard of the character Silver. Oh, I thought you meant the actual metal. Oh, 
No, we don't have any jewels and nothing in England. No, we've got the crown jewels. <laughs> right. um, no, we. Uh, yeah, no, not really. I don't know. I hadn't heard much about him or and about the character. Do you think this whole the, the the this story of justice versus greed is is it an American story? Is it a universal story? It's universal, I think. I mean, you see what's happening in the world, and um, certainly recently uh, with economic collapse and right. then political and journalistic kind of corruption you sort of think this happens everywhere and it's human it's a human universal story that power corrupts and it's very enticing um having all those things but right. actually at what cost and it just keeps coming around and around and around it's, it's history it's in cycles did you enjoy being in a western i loved it yeah i felt a little bit cheeky as a brit managed to wangle my way into a western but um no, it's brilliant. It's such an iconic period or an iconic sort of genre right. and period and such a sort of fundamental part of movie history uh, and American history. Right. So to be part of that and um, part, of that, part of the history of filmmaking is quite exciting. Is there an ana analogous part of British history? I mean, the, the frontier and the whole winning of the West is so American. Is there... I mean, you guys are much older than we are. And we, yeah, our history is longer, but we have... Uh, oh, there's lots. There's Henry VIII. There's the Industrial Revolution. There's... All sorts. We don't have anything such like what you. Our, our, our history tends to happen very slowly and over a course of and more hundreds, refined. hundreds of years. I think we're a little more crass over here. Well, I don't know. I think we're well. We're just sort of you know we're a bit sort of cynical and a bit slow. So everything <laughs> is kind of safe, and we just do everything a bit slowly. So we don't really have revolutions. We have just kind of gradual just change. Ups. Yeah, exactly. Every now and then. Yeah. We had a but we're good now, right? On the revolution thing. Well, I don't know. You might have another one. <laughs> Your character, Rebecca Reed, is a frontier woman, and uh, un unlike a lot of female roles in big summer movies, she's very strong yeah. and resourceful. Yeah. Um, is that like you? Is that a stretch for you? That, well, I, I'd like to think it was like me. Um, I think it was important for me when I read the part that I wanted to give her a bit of grit and steel, and that she was a survivor in this very very male world totally, yeah. and that she's also a protector of a child and a mother and really like a single mother and um, for me that was really important so I I kind of didn't want her just to be a damsel in distress attached to some train tracks it was right. kind of more than that and there's a complexity of relationship with the two men in her life um, so there's loads of stuff to play and all the action sequences that must have been yeah. fun right? I mean that was brilliant I have to say. Do you do most of your stunts? All yeah. of your stunts? Gore wanted us to do as many as possible. So you're running on the train and doing all yeah, that Yeah, and I have to say, I was better than Bill Fickner. He wasn't, he didn't like the stunts very much. <laughs> you're a better frontier woman than Bill Fickner. Yeah, he was supposed to be really relaxed and cool, and I was, and I, I, I could be scared, I could look scared. It was quite easy for me to act that, you know, on top uh -huh. of those trains. He had to look cool, so <laughs> it was a <laughs> bit more difficult for him. What was the most surprising thing you learned about yourself being put in this position as, as this frontier woman and... and, and well, for me, I suppose, uh, as, an, as an actor, as probably doing the stunts, it was like, actually, how I was going to react to them. Because I didn't think that I'd be able to do that. Well, I thought, how can you act and throw yourself off a train at the same time? Because there's huge, ginormous stunts in this movie. You use yeah. real trains. Real trains, real horses, upside down of things. You know, it was kind of mad. Yes. And uh, I just didn't know how I was going to be able to act at the same time. But I realised I actually really enjoyed them. I had a lot of fun. And that's part of... I mean, it feeds into that character. She's grit, she's strong, she's a bit of a tomboy. She has to survive and match up to the boys. And so that's what I realised through this film, that um, I quite enjoyed doing it. And you did a smashing job. Thank you. The film is, the film is a swashbuckling, swashbuckling adventure. It is. And uh, you were great in it. Thank you Good very much. Thank you. Thanks. Lovely to meet you. What an epic this movie is. Yeah, it certainly is. It was an epic journey making it. Where, where did that idea come from? I mean, people haven't really done westerns in a long time. Did, did you have a kernel of an idea of how to do them in a new, technologically amazing way, or? Well, we tried to, you know, re, kind of reinvent it a little bit. Um, I think it's a it's a very multi generational film in the sense that I think, you know, our, our grandfathers would might come and and, and, and and nudge their you know their their, their grandchildren, and you know when the William Tell kicks in and have a, a very there's a lot of people who have a very loyal sense of. Of um, well, a sense of memory of of, of it's a such an ranger. American story. It is really. a very American story, and then we just try to say, well, you know, let's not forget that there were people here before us, you know, and and making Tonto more relevant um, as a character, and it's more of a two-hander in that way. And our, I think our Lone Ranger is just a little bit more um, three-dimensional. I mean, I think he struggles with his his code, you know. Right. It's not just a cardboard hero yeah. with a square jaw. Yeah, I think he, he deals with that. 
and, and also I think the palette that you paint the film on is gorgeous and you really, uh, you shot most of it live, right? Not a lot of green screen? Very little, very little stage work, very little green screen, mostly. You know, we tried to, you know, the landscape is a character in the movie and, and our kind of relationship to the earth, certainly, um, you know, from Tonto's perspective. And then this, this, the railroad sort of representing progress and kind of bisecting that. that the, pushing, pushing, Yeah, pushing and, and, and kind of dividing the landscape and, and quantifying it and into something that we kind of own and purchase. And that's very foreign to, to the Native American way. And um, so it was just a, it was like a, an opportunity to sort of retell it and, and to, to have you know, Army's character arrive with these noble concepts of, of justice and, and right and wrong and, and to sort of live in a world um, where justice can be purchased and what do you, how do you reconcile that? Right, which again, uniquely American. Yeah. I, I think one thing that you bring to it is you, you have this great visual storytelling style. You're able to get great comedy and great acting within these giant movies. Did you learn that doing commercials when you first started? Where does that storytelling touch come from? Do you think? I don't. I just always felt like the great, you know, the great westerns to me were ha had this, you know, magnificent sort of operatic scale, but um, but were always you know intimate in some way, you know. And right. I think it's important as a director to to not get lost in in all of that. You know, you you were obligated. We're in the summer movie landscape. We're obligated to have these like fantastic action sequences and. Certainly, if you put the Transcontinental Railroad in your movie, you've got to have a great train chase. Uh, and you do. That's it's the, the last twenty-five minutes is spectacular. Well, thank you. It's um. So that's but fun. you don't lose. You the, try to the keep that's what I'm interpersonal saying. stuff. Yeah, there's so much palette. logistics that you're you're struggling with and, and and putting together the puzzle, and you just have to remind yourself every day that it's a story about these guys and and their relationship. And you really, you've got six or seven, you know, principal characters, and you're telling that story, and you want the actors to feel. Like you're not distracted by you know the 400 people on horseback or the train or right. whatever's going on in the background. You know you're there for them. Well, I think it, it makes the whole film hang together. The, 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 the individual stories and how the characters come together on that palette. It's just uh, it's an amazing story. It looks gorgeous. It's very exciting, and uh, I think you threaded the needle. I think well, old-time fans will love it. New people will love it. I hope so. Uh, well done. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Great to see you. Good luck with it. Thanks.